I'm back and uh, here's going to be a rather lengthy video. I only have one hand so this might be tedious but I'm going to try to do the best I can. Um, let me first show my rig here. This is the uh, dummy load, 50 ohm dummy load that I built and designed. No big deal. Pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can tell it does have a uh, power tap on it which is basically off of a uh, diode and a uh, capacitor which uh, rectifies the sinusoidal wave and uh, allows me to hook my DMM to it, do some calculations, and I can get my power level from there, which I did use to calibrate this thing. So this thing is pretty close now to what the actual power is. None of this stuff is... Uh, you know, like a uh, thirty thousand dollar oscilloscope or uh, or spectrum analyzer. I mean, it's not high precision. It doesn't really have to be. But this is the this is a demonstration of the transmitter of this uh, unit here of my Yazoo ham radio. I've been trying to get working. I tested the receiver. It seems to be working. Um, as I did some of my other videos, uh, I do have a bit of a problem with the transmitter. And that is, it doesn't seem to have flat frequency response across the band. Um, but what I'm going to do is tune it up, because all of this is done by hand, by the way, which I just love doing that, rather than having a machine do it for me. Um, and uh, maybe if anyone views this, including my friend Vladimir, he can take a look at it and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Or perhaps this is the proper behavior. I don't know. But um, I, I'm going to try to do this with... Uh, with one hand on the camera and the other operating uh, the controls and hopefully it'll work out okay. So I'll go through the entire tune-up procedure. In fact, this might actually help some people. So everything is off right now, as you can tell. And we'll turn it on. Now, I basically have it connected via the coaxial cable to the bypass here. I have it set to bypass, so it's connected to the dummy load. Um, do have it on uh, forward power. There is no reflection or very little, so we don't have to worry about that. So what it is operating as a uh, power meter, not as a uh, standing wave ratio meter, an SWR meter. It is not operating as that right now. Um, so I'm just going to try to go through this uh, in, a, in a fairly straightforward manner. Right now it's on receive. The heaters are off. And I'm going to reset everything. Um, everything is basically set up on the 20 meter band. We turn the plate 20 meter. Pre-select 20 meter. Try to maximize the noise. Which means I guess we're... Well, what it means is we're basically tuning the uh, the pre-selected filter to uh, to its highest amplitude level. The load we set to, which is the um, is basically just a matching network to match the impedance of the output of the transmitter to the input impedance of the line in this thing here, and then subsequently, of course, to the dummy load, which it's a pass through, so it's basically going to be 50 ohm impedance all the way. This is set to a certain level, and which um, is the number four, which comes from the manual, and then of course it's tweaked. Uh, all the other things are basically non-functional. It's also on lower sideband as well. So we're doing um, single sideband. So the heaters are off right now, which means the filaments are off. I'm gonna turn that on now too. Now we'll notice or maybe we won't, if I can get in there. A glow from the tubes, isn't that pretty? We also have the fan operating in the back, and we're going to allow the uh, filaments to heat up a little bit, maybe about 10 seconds or so, 20 seconds, whatever. And then we'll go through the procedure. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to turn this to manual transmit. Make sure the carrier is non-existent. Turn this to manual transmit, which we do this by turning here. And you notice we'll get 
um, 50 milliamps on the uh, cathode of the uh, power amplifier. That uh, signal meter is now operating as a, um, now let me turn this off, is now operating as a um, current meter on the, uh, the cathode, uh, not the cathode, the grid, excuse me, the grid of the uh, power amplifier. Sorry, it's the grid. Um, there's the switch for it there. We can switch between uh, IC, which is your current indication, or PO, which is power output, or automatic level control. And we're going to leave this. When you do the tune-up, you're supposed to switch it to PO for power output. But I'm using this as my power output, and I'm constantly monitoring, monitoring the uh, current levels to the grid of the uh, power amplifier tubes, which are in this enclosure right here. Okay, so it should register 50 milliamps, which it did. So everything is fine there. Now what we do is we tune up carrier down and we hit the tune button. Watch this and turn up the carrier ever so slightly above 50 milliamps. And this will go off. The tune will go off after 10 seconds so you don't overheat the tubes. Hit that again. The next step is to maximize, to create a maxima of the pre-select and then dip the plate. We also want to look at, we're, we're dipping it and maximizing the current now, not the power output. So this is hardly moving at all. We're not getting any appreciable power out right now. We're just... We're just messing with the current across the uh, across the grid. So we hit this again, and I'm just going to show the meter. We move the pre-select, and we want to maximize this. So there you go. Turn that off. And then we want to dip the plate. And that would be about there. All right, so we've done the current. Now what we do is, is the next step would be to flip this switch here to the power output level, and then this meter would be used as a relative power indicator. It doesn't signify power in absolute terms. It's only relative, but we're not going to use that. We're going to keep it on current indication, which is that lower scale, by the way, that underscale. You see 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 300 milliamps. And we're going to use this scale here for power. So that way we can monitor both at the same time. With the FT-102, which is another rig that I might actually got, it's another tube rig, which is considered probably the best tube rig ever made. There were two meters that you could do this on the, on the, the, uh, the rig itself. This one does not have that. Um, so you just use a separate device like I'm using here. I'm using an antenna tuner to uh, just monitor. All it's functioning as is a, is a power meter right now. So anyway, we've done this. The next step we do is we turn the carrier to the 11 o'clock position. We turn it up a little bit. Now we're going to be looking for power indications. What we do is is a, a, an iterational system in which we peak the pre-select, we peak the load, we peak the plate. Then we turn up two divisions on the carrier until we get to maximum power output. And then it basically is tuned. So here we go. And I'll be showing this as we do it, the power meter. Now here's the pre-select. All right, now that's pre-select. <clears throat> let it, let it and give a few moments to recover. Now we do loading. All right. And I'm just going to continue to concentrate on this. Now we maximize the plate. All right. Now we turn up two divisions on the carrier. So we're turning up the carrier current. Looking, we're used to turning up the carrier, which is more current uh, driving the grid of the uh, PA tubes, the finals. All right, now here we're going to do pre-select again. And we peak it. 
Turn it off. Let it recover. Loading. Okay. Let it recover. And now plate. Now we'll remember we're maximizing the plate as well. Okay. All right. Um, another two divisions we turn up on the carrier. Now, pre select, peek it off. Loading. Peek it off. Now plate. Peek it off. All right. Now, this will be the last one. We turn it up. This will be full power. All right. Peek it. Off. <clears throat> Load. Peek it. Off. Last time. Plate. Peek it. Off. Now, I'm going to let the radio recover a little bit. This is actually getting warm, so we're putting a lot of power into there. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is, first of all, show the current. We're drawing a little over 250 milliamps. All right. This is a logarithmic scale. At least that looks that way to me. And so we're putting out a little over, it looks like about 125 watts to me. I mean, we're doing very well as far as the amount of uh, energy that is the power that is being put out um, into this load. Now, this is where the problem occurs. We're tuned up pretty good. Everything looks fine. Now, look what happens. This is the, this is the VFO here, the voltage uh, frequency, voltage control frequency oscillator. We're tuned in this band. When I move this, of course, it's 500 kilohertz either way, or not either way, but it's 500 kilohertz span. As we move this, we'll be able to see how it changes. Now, notice what happens as I increase it. Now, it, it went off, so I'm gonna have to do it again. Power drops, as you, and, and, and it drops in both directions, almost like a bandpass filter. In other words, it's, it's as if you tune it up, you're getting maximum power output, and then to either side of the tune point, and this is on every band, it tapers off like a bandpass filter. Now, you would expect this type of behavior, but I would think it would be fairly flat. I mean, and it's kind of to the point where, if you see what I'm doing, I can actually move it and get almost no power of output at all when we get near the end of the travel of the, um, of the VFO. Now, with this tune-up, I did a mistake. I really should have tuned it in the middle so I could demonstrate that it drops off to either side of what amounts to, it looks to me like a bell-shaped curve, but it does do that. So I don't know if this is proper behavior or not. I would think, I'm relatively new to ham radios, and especially these old-style units, which I really like, but nonetheless, um, I would think that the, the power curve would be relatively flat but perhaps it's not. So if anyone sees this and can give me some information, I'd appreciate it. And Vladimir, I hope you enjoyed this and maybe you can tell me what you think. Um, so that's at least the tune-up procedure. And I hope someone can help me and let me know whether or not this is uh, proper behavior for this particular unit.
Um, again, you would kind of think so. The pre-select and all of these basically function to t tune the circuits to highest um, energy uh, conductance, so to speak, you know, to resonance. Um, and I would think that when you move the VFO, that it would, the power would drop out. I mean, that would be proper. It just it seems very pronounced to the point where you're getting almost no power at all, as you see. And this is reproduced on every band, by the way. So, again, thank you for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed this. Bye-bye.